If you think there was a Moon Apollo mission that went without a hitch, I have a bit of bad news for you. Each Apollo mission was not the same as the last, and this is what we are looking at on Vintage Retrospect. Hello, I'm your host Chad, and this is Vintage Retrospect, a small place where we can talk about spaceflight history that you probably haven't heard of. Before we begin, I must stress that we are only covering Apollo missions that had a real moon objective, such as either circling the moon or landing on the moon. I will not count test flights as I feel these missions did not fully push the real world requirements of the missions as well as avoiding certain incidents that would require its own video, such as what happened on Apollo 1. We begin with Apollo 8, the first mission to take three astronauts around the moon. However, the program was not yet ready for landing. What possibly could go wrong on a non-moon landing mission, right? Well, not so fast. Let's talk about the pogo oscillations that occurred by the five F1 engines. This problem occurs when the rocket is vibrating on the longitudinal axis, creating an effect similar to when someone is riding on a pogo stick. Apollo 4's test flight originally had this problem, but on a larger scale. However, the issue still persisted during the Apollo flight. Thankfully, this was not as severe as to require a mid-flight and launch abort. So now Apollo 10 pushed things one step further to simulate a moon landing but not actually perform the descent. This mission not only looped around the moon, but it was testing the lunar module's basic flight functions such as the deorbit burn, a flip maneuver, orbit the moon around 8 miles in altitude, testing the descent radar and break orbit to complete the rendezvous maneuver to meet back up with the command and service module, or the CSM. Well, the problem on this mission is that after the ascent stage of the LEM, or lunar excursion module, had triggered its separation from the descent stage, the landing radar and rendezvous later got all mixed up due to a human error. Not a surprise since the landing computer was only 64 kilobytes of memory. The ascent stage ended up rolling off axis and Gene Cernan went into panic mode and Tom Cernan, the other LEM pilot, immediately recovered this issue. All because Gene Cernan forgot to let Stafford know that he had set the switch to the rendezvous radar. Keep this in mind for the Apollo 11 mission because something similar happens again, but with a different subsystem. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong during the descent down to the lunar surface, they were greeted with a concerning alarm called the 1202 alarm. This program alarm technically called for an abort, however, some ingenuity back at Mission Control had quickly analyzed the situation and had better news for the crew. What is a 1202 alarm? Well, we will go more into that details of that in a later episode, but basically it was a memory overflow which caused a conflict with the landing radar and rendezvous radar. It really came down to a design issue where the rendezvous radar and landing radar we're getting power from two different power buses, which affected the timing on how the computers process this input and output. And that in turn overloaded the computer and caused the 1202 alarm. This takes us to Apollo 12 where problems in spaceflight get really crazy. During the liftoff of the Saturn V rocket carrying Pete Conrad, Alan Bean, and Richard Gordon, a bolt of lightning struck the vehicle at about 35 seconds into flight, and another strike occurred at T plus 52 seconds. These two rare incidents caused all three fuel cells to go offline. This meant that the spacecraft could only be able to operate on ba battery power only. The attitude indicator went out after the second strike, which garbled the telemetry at mission control. The flight miraculously continued requiring no abort since all systems either had redundancy or had recovered. So Apollo 13. So as you heard in the clip, a call out from the mission commander Jim Lovell saying, we've had a main B bus undervolt. This was bad because the fuel cells would be delivering a low voltage to the power systems of the spacecraft, but all of this was caused by an explosion. Yes, this was the first explosion of a manned spacecraft in space. Don't worry, the crew made it safely back to Earth, and there were more problems that snowballed from this primary issue. I'll be taking this incident further in more detail in a later video, as the Apollo 13 debacle would take too much time of this video. 
Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. After much changes and refinement of the CSM, Apollo 14 went without any problems, right? Nah, Houston, we've had another problem. This time with the docking of the CSM and Lunar Module, which was supposed to be a routine limb pull from the Saturn V's S4B stage, which unfortunately became a Kerbal Space Program problem we all love and enjoy. The command module failed to connect the LEMS docking hard capture device. The issue was quickly resolved by the sixth attempt, finally triggering the 12 latches to clamp shut and lock the two spacecraft together for its journey to the moon. Apollo 15 actually went well. It got to the moon, landed, came back to Earth, but with only two parachutes instead of three. The problem seemed to stem from vented fuel damage to the third chute. But thankfully, only two fully deployed chutes are actually required for safe recovery. The command service module for Apollo 16 will be the culprit for this next mission. The CSM main engine was performing oscillations causing the spacecraft to shake. This issue delayed their moon landing by a few days. And finally, we get to Apollo 17. I promise this is a fun one. One of the fenders of the lunar rover fell off. It was decided that this wasn't a threat to the mission. However, using the critical thinking of astronauts Gene Cernan and Harrison Jack Schmidt, they, de they decided that duct tape fixes everything and proceeded to repair the fender. Apollo 17 would be the last flight of Apollo and a new era of spa space exploration followed with the start of the Skylab program. Considering how long the rover is still up there on the moon, I wonder if the rover's fender fell off again. <laughs> Well, if you stuck with me this long, I promise the next video won't be this long, but it is my first compilation vi video. So if you actually like this better, please let me know down below and I will add these really fun videos as part of my rotation. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the more detailed breakdowns of each Apollo problem. I'm your host, Chad, and I will see you out on the launch pad.